Okay, so in the packet, we have a few of these formulas in an alternate form presented, which is also in the slides, but I'll just use the packet. Uh, and if in case we want to fill in the blanks, just to review, an annuity is a series of fixed payments made at fixed periods of time over a given time frame. Um, and these, uh, these figures help us to understand the concept of present value of annuity as well as future value which we'll get to uh, in the next video but almost everything um, we discussed mathematically speaking can be applied to future value of annuities as well um, with just a very slight tweak but the last little detail is that going back to the slides uh, our final in our final derivation what we had is the future value of an annuity solved as such because we started with the um, geometric series, applied the geometric series sum formula, simplify, simplify, simplified, and then one minus one, of course, canceled to make P, and R was factored out. I think I might have forgotten to mention that, but just kind of reorganizing. But basically, the thing I wanted to mention is that this quantity right here uh, is denoted often in finance books uh, given to be the ratio within the annuity. So basically, A, N, I don't even know what you call this, but it's basically a multivariate function, which is a shorthand for the ratio within the annuity given the number of periods and the uh, periodic interest rate. And also, if we think about this formula, it's A is equal to R, which is the payment amount times this ratio. So this ratio is unique to what is the interest rate and what is the uh, how, for how long, and that's kind of a uniquely controlling factor. And if I take those two parameters and multiply by simply how much the payment is, it will give me the net present value of the annuity as such. So let's go back to the whiteboard and do some examples. Example eight says, find the present value and the future value of an annuity where Joe deposits $200 every month for three years if compounded monthly at a rate of 6%. So in summary, we could really just use these formulas to do all of this work. Um, and the, the whole point of the previous a million videos was to uh, just make some sense of why. Why are these formulas, why do they make any sort of sense? Um, but basically, let's try to use the left-hand formula, which is that A is equal to R, where R is just the payment amount, 200, times this little a to the n hat p or n bar p whatever i don't i don't even know what that's called but none it doesn't matter um so what we also obviously need to know is what is n and what is p and just to recall n is little n times t and little p is equal to r divided by n and it's it depends on um the type of compounding and the time frame and the interest rate, all of those which need to be given if we are going to solve this. So in our case, uh, it's compounded monthly, so little n is 12, and t is three years, so that's three. So basically capital N would be 36, and that's just how many pay, uh, payment periods we'd have uh, for our annuity. Basically, there's going to be 36 payments of $200 in that. And then little p is the periodic interest rate, which, again, we'll want to use a decimal when we're using formulas, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that, it would be 0 0.06 divided by 12. 6 out of 12 reduces to 1 half, so that would just be 0 0.005 as the monthly interest rate uh, in this condition. So circling back, basically the uh, present value of the annuity is gonna be R times this A, and now we know N is 36 and A is 0 0.05, 0, 0, 005. Uh, in the world of math and finance before calculators, all of this notation was a little more important because what we could then do is look up this value within a table and all of those values would be pre-calculated um, as, as a reference point. In modern math, it, it's kind of archaic because uh, we, we obviously know the formula in general. We could just use that. We don't necessarily need to look it up in a table. Uh, but I think it's worth mentioning because for those of you who study finance, 
Uh, you, you may already know all this, but uh, for those of us that don't, it's something that could be very confusing um, in terms of understanding how these formulas work and why why they do what they do. But basically, I could also calculate A36.005 just by using this particular formula. So if I plug those things in, that would be 1 minus 1 plus P, which is 1.005, to the negative N, all divided by P. And that should give me, whoops, can't see what I'm writing. That should give me the value of A evaluated at 36 and 0 0.005 as my multivariate function. And we just need to multiply that by 200. Or if, if that's getting you confused, just use this formula because it's the same dang thing. You plug in R, you plug in the periodic constraint, you plug in the number of periods, you're golden. So I don't really care. Uh, and as I mentioned right before break, uh, I will allow you some semblance of a cheat sheet, but more to come on what will be allowed and what I will be putting on that uh, later when I have time to actually figure it out, but I haven't yet. So anyways, let's do that. We're going to take 200, and it's then going to be multiplied by all of that business, which is 1 minus 1.005 to the negative 36. Make sure that my parentheses down here divided by 0 0.005. And this should give us the present value of the annuity, which is $6,574.20, rounding to the nearest cent. Let me make that a little bit. Plus ugly and neat. Going to check my notes just to make sure I did not botch anything. Seems seems to be consistent with what I got before. Okay, and like circling back to okay, what the heck did we just do? What does all this math mean? Um, basically, what I did is looking at an annuity of a series of payments: 200 plus 200 plus 200 plus 200. Each one of those $200 payments will be worth a little bit less because the present value is going is like going back in time where uh, if, if we were to invest the money instead of saving it and depositing it later, it would have been worth less presently than it would in the future. And note that another kind of just, if, if you're trying to make some basic sense, you could look at, well, what's the actual value of the annuity? Because what we did is we put in $200 every month. And if we just add up uh, 36 payments of $200, that's a way oversimplified analysis of what's going on. We could kind of see, well, how much like raw money, ignoring all interest, uh, that's going into the annuity. So at the end of the annuity, the, the present value tells me, well, how much is this worth today? Now, the future value of the annuity, very similarly, will tell me after it's done, after I'm done putting in that all that money, how much will I have, which is also useful. That's the future value which will be in the next video.